Coming up today, we have editor of WBEZ's Curious City, Alexandra Solomon in the house. Woo! But first things first, let's take a look at some headlines. A group of thieves in Fresno, California, made off with $27,000 worth of product after robbing an Apple store. They stole one single laptop charger. <laughs> Also this week in California, a gas station clerk saved a woman from kidnapping by hiding her in the gas station bathroom. She had to buy a pack of gum to get the key, but he eventually let her in. <laughs> More than 200 people have reportedly gotten sick after eating contaminated Del Monte vegetable packs. In other news, zero people have gotten sick after eating pizza. <laughs> Scientists have recently discovered that the keto diet has proven effective in boosting cancer treatments in mice. However, it was also found to dramatically boost depression in me. <laughs> A Minnesota man serving life for two murders is running for the U.S. Senate, which is insane because normally politicians wait till they're in office to commit crimes. <laughs> A burglar broke into an escape room and then called 911 when he could not get out. <laughs> and that does not bode so well for him for getting out of his next escape room, prison. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy director James Gunn has been fired over disturbing tweets that were uncovered from 10 years ago. So watch out, Donald Trump. In 10 years, you're going to get fired, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> A Fort Lauderdale man was charged with a DUI after attempting to blame his pet dog for being behind the wheel. <laughs> when reached for comment, the man's attorney said, Meow. <laughs> a California law imposing regulations on pro-life pregnancy centers has been overruled by the Supreme Court. Here with more information is senior Christian correspondent, Melissa McGlenzie. Melissa, everybody, please give her a <laughs> Thank you for having me, and God bless. So, uh, Melissa, I understand that the Supreme Court recently struck down California's Reproductive Fact Act, which many are calling a victory for Christians, yes? That's right, Maggie. You know, it is always a win for God when we strike down facts. <laughs> now, these so-called trap clinics are accused of luring in pregnant women by posing as abortion centers. Well, actually, we prefer crisis pregnancy centers, and we're not trying to trick or trap anyone into thinking we're abortion clinics. Okay, uh, so what's your crisis pregnancy center called? Planned Parent Good. All right. <laughs> of course it is. Um, why don't you just tell me a little bit more about this ruling, huh? Well, the FACT Act required us to inform women of things that we didn't want to tell them, which is clearly a violation of our free speech. Wait, wait, wait. How does informing women infringe on your free speech? Well, as a Christian, I shouldn't be forced to tell women things that are counter to my beliefs, like that they may qualify for access to low-cost birth control, that they have a right to obtain an abortion if they want one, or that we're not what you'd call a licensed medical facility. Well, no, <laughs> Melissa, it sounds like you really should tell people those things. Okay, well, Jesus and Jeff Sessions say I don't have to. Isn't that, <laughs> aren't you just lying at that point? Some say lying. I call it my constitutional right to mislead. For example, I'm now free to tell women about the dangers of abortion. Did you know that if you have an abortion, you can't ever have kids again? No, that is not true. <laughs> no, it, it is true. They blow your uterus up like a balloon and it floats away. No, that's, <laughs> that's incorrect. Uh, did you know that life begins at erection? What? No. <laughs> Maggie, when your fetus is three weeks old, it can scream. No, it can't. Oh my God, these are all lies. Are these lies, Maggie? or are they free speech? Lies! <laughs> All right, well think about it this way. What about the babies, okay? Now what if one of those unborn fetuses could have grown up to cure cancer? What if one of their moms could have grown up to cure cancer? <laughs> A lady scientist! <laughs> that's hilarious, who'd look after her kids? All right, I think that's... <laughs> Enough. I am ready to end this segment. Can uh, we just... No. No, no, Maggie. You're going to see this interview to term. No, you're out of here. No. Get out. Melissa, everyone. We'll no, be right back. I'm not leaving get out. for nine months. Yes, you are. Shoot. Get out. I'm trying McDonald's new $10,000 menu. It's like the $1 menu 
but for rich people like you. Chicken McNuggets, a double cheeseburger, a side of fries, a large drink, and even a toy for the young heir or heiress. All for the low price of a few grand. Unless... <laughs> You can't afford it. McDonald's ten thousand dollar menu. Ba da ba ba ba. Thank you, thank you. Welcome back to the news with Maggie Smith. So these past few months, you guys have probably seen a lot of stories about unions, whether they be from the teacher strikes to Supreme Court cases or Elon Musk swearing his workers don't want to be in one. <laughs> but what exactly is a union? Well, unions are organizations that engage in collective bargaining on behalf of their members. You know, all for one, one for all. Like the Three Musketeers or Socialists. Just <laughs> France in general. <laughs> because while one worker may not stand much of a chance negotiating with their employer, all the workers together stand a much better chance of getting things done. Through their efforts, unions try to improve pretty much anything needed in order to advance the working conditions of their members, like the steel union ensuring workers can only work so many hours in a row, or the teachers union fighting to get teachers reimbursed for buying their own school supplies, or the Screen Actors Guild protecting Asian and trans actors from ever playing Asian and trans actors. <laughs> Those roles are safe for Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> Now, they can afford to lobby for their causes with money raised through their dues-paying members and something called agency fees. Agency fees are smaller dues paid by non-union members for receiving union benefits. Now, they've been a controversial subject in the news lately because people against them claim that they're basically being extorted into paying fees for a union that they don't want to be a part of. Kind of like how, yes, your Netflix subscription pays for Queer Eye and Orange is the New Black, but it also pays for the ranch, and that's just part of the deal. <laughs> but people who are pro-agency fees say that they are necessary for unions to continue their ability to help all workers. These were dealt a huge blow a few weeks ago after the Supreme Court ruled 5-4 that non-union members will no longer be able to collect agency fees from public sector employees. The deciding vote of this case coming from Supreme Court Justice and dad from anything on Disney Channel, Neil Gorsuch. <laughs> now, if you're thinking, oh man, that stinks, but I'm not in a union, so whatever. Um, it's actually not whatever. You're whatever. You're loser, loser, double loser, whatever, as if, get the picture, duh. <laughs> if you have a job, odds are unions have shaped the way you are treated at that job. Unless you're watching this on an iPhone that you just made. <laughs> now, unions have led to such things as health benefits, safe working conditions, the end of child labor, and the freaking weekend, you guys! Just this month, yes! Saturday and Sunday are days off around the world! Just this month, new evidence was released in the New York Times concluding that unions played a major role in reducing income inequality in general, even outside their members. It also concludes that weaker unions since the 60s have led to a wider gap between rich and poor. And with Trump's new Supreme Court nominee, it's likely they will get weaker. So even if it doesn't make sense for you to be in one, it's a good idea to support them because they protect us as a society. Like the ozone layer, which is another thing the Supreme Court will likely be voting against in the coming years. <laughs> and, um, oh, this is weird. Um, the script just kind of ends there. Did the writers forget to write the rest or what's... Strike! Oh. Strike! 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 What? Strike! Guys! Strike. Guys, what's going on? What's going on is we're on strike is what's going on! Strike! 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 Guys, what's the problem? Uh, the problem, Maggie, is that we're here writing jokes for you, and what do we get out of it? The last writer's meeting, she brought pineapple pizza! Oh, yeah. Yeah. strike because you want me to get you better pizza? And to legalize weed! Yeah! Alright, Prithik, I don't have the power to legalize weed. Keep trying! Yeah! Yeah! Guys, I really had no idea that you felt this way. I, I mean, I really value you and the work that you do, so of course if that's what you'd want, I'd be happy to get non-pineapple pizza. Does that sound good? We accept those terms! Great! Awesome! Now get back to your cages. Those jokes aren't going to write themselves. <laughs> the news will be right back with WBEZ's Alexandra Solomon!
From the maker of Doritos comes Doritos for her. Chips so quiet, they don't even exist. Now in a variety of flavors, including watered down salsa, lady nachos, and slut. Doritos for her. I am joined by the editor of WBEZ's Curious City, Alexandra Solomon. Hello, Alexandra. Thank you. Yes, thanks for coming and hanging out with us tonight. Um, so for those of us who don't know what Curious City is, the fools, um, could you go ahead and explain your show yes. a little bit to us? So Curious City is WBEZ's public engagement process, project. Basically, we let the public decide the questions that we're going to answer. So people submit their questions. We put the questions to a voting round, and then we go out and investigate the answers. That's very cool. Um, I know that just this week earlier, you guys did one on lead in Chicago water. Yeah. That was something I was, when I listened to the program, I was super shocked to find out that we are on the verge of like a real, ba real bad crisis. Yeah, we had, uh, you know, we edit our stories, we let other people listen, and every time we finish an edit, someone was like, what water filter should I get? Yeah. Um, what water filter should yeah. I get? <laughs> well, no, uh, we do not recommend, there's a, a, there's a link on okay. our website, wbez.org slash Curious City, where there are a whole list of filters that the EPA suggests, so um, you can go check those out there. But basically, we got a question from somebody who had seen initially all the fountains running all the time along right. the lakefront, and they wanted to know why were those fountains running all the time. You mean like the water fountains the water that you drink fountains, out of? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it, yes. it turned out that they were flushing the fountains uh, for lead. So that was the first story we did, and yeah. That's so horrifying. <laughs> That's okay. They've turned oh. them off now. Uh, so we're drinking pure lead now? <laughs> They're just off, so you can't okay. drink out of the fountains Got it. right now. Okay. Um, so dying of lead poisoning, dehydration, like pick your right. poison. Those literally. are your options, right? Great. In summer, so people probably don't need to. Oh my God. You know, take a drink as they're running. Uh, and we did a follow-up story because we got another question wanting to know, well, how could you fix the problem? Right. And uh, it turns out the answer is basically you got to swap out all of the lead service lines in the city. Those are the the, the lines that actually connect to your homes. Sure. And they're made of lead. They yes. are made of lead. Yes. I what? Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> that was sort of, everybody used to do that. That was common. Uh -huh. Chicago wasn't the only place. Although we did kind of lay them down to the very last minute. We sort of knew legislation was coming and we kept going. Um, lots of other cities were already swapping theirs out, but we didn't. Uh, and wow. we're, we're doing some reporting on that, actually, which is oh, coming great. up. Okay, so we're getting a little sneak peek. You're getting a sneak Curious peek, City. yes. So we're on to the lead in the water, and that was from a question, though, from someone in the public kind of wondering something, and it turned out there was actually something there that was That's pretty so important. Sweet. So on a personal level, you can get a new filter. On a huge level, we have to spend yeah, probably a lot of money. so much money to change all the pipes in Chicago. A lot of money. I'm laughing because I'm crying inside. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, another story, switching gears away from utter depression. Um, another story you guys did that I was so fascinated by, and I think the audience will be as well, is how many coyotes are in Chicago? Yeah, a lot. A lot of coyotes are in Chicago. You guys have to listen to this show because every single episode's like, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. a lot. We actually got a lot of questions about coyotes because people thought maybe the city was putting them here on purpose uh, <laughs> to control the rodent population. Sure. Um, which we get, a lot of times we'll get questions and then people also sort of speculate on what they think the answer might be. Um, but it turns out the city of Chicago is not putting uh, coyotes here to control the rats. Oh my God. Uh, but there are, they estimate around 2,000. 2,000? Yeah. <laughs> There's 2,000 coyotes. Um, and they really like oh, it here. Geez. They tried to take them out of the city and they came back because they Amazing. tracked them. Um, and so they came right back. Uh, they. 
made a home at Soldier Field. They have dens all over the place. Yeah, it's crazy. Soldier Field. Soldier Field. They're like camping out to see Beyonce. When she yeah, comes. I don't know. It's, they like the the sports. I don't know. Are there other uh, Soldier Field because it's like what like more I, solitary? Is there is there yeah, other places in the city? There are all kinds of places. Railroad tracks. They okay. kind of move along railroad tracks. So they've Hobo found coyotes. There. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I love it. That's great. Um, okay, so lead in the water, coyotes. Yeah. Hurt on a personal level, yeah. what's one of the craziest stories that you can recall being shocked by? Shocked. Well, you know, we one of our stories that kind of probably got one of, one of our most popular stories, I would say, was about why boys used to swim naked in high school here. And um, <laughs> what? I, I, I actually knew it was true because my dad always talked about swimming naked in high school. That's what you want and, to yeah, hear your right, dad yeah, talking exactly. about. Oh, I remember <laughs> my high school days. You know, and it was one of his like repeat stories that he told Ew, all the time. Dad. It's true. And so I knew it was true because my dad is not a liar. So I knew it was true and we'd gotten this question a lot and um, yeah, we had some interesting ideas about hygiene, uh, boys hygiene in particular, not girls. Uh, of course not. That would be insane. And um, <laughs> the thing I think that was the craziest thing when we were sort of reporting that story is that we kept doing it really late. Um, <laughs> like a lot of, because they did it in other parts of the country too, because this was a thing, a hygiene thing, and we kept going uh, way later than pretty much <laughs> oh my everywhere else. Uh, so give me a, a year. Yeah, it was like <laughs> late 70s. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's terrible. Alexandra, I would like to continue talking to you. Would you mind sticking sure. around? Sure, yeah, I'd love it. After we take a quick break. Alexandra, everybody. Alexandra Solomon. <laughs> nice. We'll be right back. This season, cool off with a mansplained IPA. You don't understand. It's really good. Mansplained IPA. Thank you for watching another episode of the news. Here is your asterisk of the week. Looking happy and strong after all they've endured, the 12 boys and their coach rescued from the flooded Thai caves. <laughs>